Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, and today what we're going to discuss is endometriosis. We're gonna talk about what causes a lot of the pain in endometriosis, and potentially some of the causes of endometriosis. And now this is what is in the most recent research. So one of the oldest theories behind endometriosis is the Samson theory, where we have retrograde menstruation. So what happens is as we have our period, some of the menstruation actually ends up um, backflowing into the fallopian tubes and into the peritoneal cavities, and the endometrial tissue ends up latching on to areas where it's not supposed to be. Now that's Samson theory. The problem with this theory is just about every woman eventually at one point in life will experience retrograde menstruation, but not every woman has endometriosis. So so we know there's a lot more going on than just ret retrograde menstruation. So the consensus is, is there is also an inflammatory process with altered immune cell function. So we're looking at inflammation and immune cells. So there, there is now a recognized immune system dysfunction with endometriosis. So endometriosis is known as an estrogen dominant disease. So we end up with a large amount of an enzyme called aromatase. Aromatase is brought on by blood sugar swings, high omega-6, low omega-3s, and low vitamin D. These are just some of the causes of aromatase. And we'll see a lot of estrogen production when we have a lot of this enzyme aromatase. So for example, we have the omega-6s help with the production of a very inflammatory component called prostaglandin E2. When we have enough omega-3s, that gets uh, shut down. Those inflammatory pathways aren't present. But when we have high omega-6 and low omega-3, we get high prostaglandin E2, which actually stimulates the production of aromatase. So we need to make sure that we have an appropriate amount of omega-3s, those essential fatty acids, and with you can find in fish oil, you can find in flaxseed oil. And we want to make sure we've got blood sugar under control because blood sugar swings can increase the uh, uptake or increase the enzyme aromatase and vitamin D helps decrease inflammation as well, which can help decrease aromatase. We also see progesterone resistance in these women with endometriosis. Sometimes there's a genetic factor, and sometimes it's just kind of the, the luck of the draw, whether or not, as, well, sometimes we see women who are taking progesterone in order to control their endometriosis, and they do well initially, then they have to keep increasing the amount of progesterone that they're taking in order to feel the relief of endometriosis. That's considered progesterone resistance. We have estrogen dominance, so too much estrogen, too low progesterone, which should be keeping that estrogen in check. So what you want to get to the root cause of is why is your progesterone so, so low? Is it truly just some sort of genetic factor? Or can we change this? Can we look at blood sugar levels? Can we make sure that you've got enough vitamin D, enough anti-inflammatory components? Can we start, can we look at the immune system? Because the immune system will promote uh, progesterone as well, depending on what part of the immune system you're looking at. So there's a lot of other players than just progesterone itself causing progesterone resistance. We want to get to the underlying mechanism for the reason why you're producing so low progesterone and too much estrogen. Now, I found this extremely interesting in the research is the immune system dysregulation that's associated with endometriosis. They're actually wondering if this might be considered an autoimmune disease. A lot of these women with endometriosis, are see, we're seeing a Th2 dominant immune system. So we have, just to kind of give you a watered down idea of what it, our immune system's like, is we have a Th1 and Th2. Th1 is the known attacker. Th2 is the one, and we call it the flagging system. It kind of produces immunoglobulins and antibodies. It will tag a foreign invader for that Th1 to recognize quickly and go in and attack it in the process. So what we're seeing in the research is a lot of these women have an imbalance between that Th1 and Th2 immune system. They have more of that Th2 response. So with that Th2 response, they're wondering, is this, is this actually an autoimmune disease? 
They're also seeing a massive amount of mast cells in women with endometriosis. Mast cells, what happens is they degranulate and cause a big inflammatory response. That big inflammatory response is part of what causes so much pain with endometriosis. Mast cells also have estrogen receptors. So when we have um, dominant estrogen, we have too much estrogen, we're gonna have an increase in mast cells, we're gonna have an increase in that inflammatory component, and it's just gonna lead to more of the symptoms of endometriosis and possibly push us even further into endometriosis. So mast cells increase inflammation and they have estrogen receptors. So some things you can start thinking about if you have endometriosis is, are you getting enough omega-3s? Do you have enough vitamin D? Are you following some sort of anti-inflammatory diet in order to make sure that you're doing the best you can to decrease your inflammation? Do you have blood sugar swings? Uh, we like to call our friends hangry when we're going out and we're either just hanging out with some friends and we have that one friend we pack snacks for because if it's been too long since we've had lunch or dinner or breakfast, they tend to get really irritable. We call that hangry. So hangry means you're having blood sugar issues. So you want to look at all aspects of your health and trying to figure out, is, am I doing everything I can? Am I taking care of all of these other aspects that can be enhancing my endometriosis? So if you like videos like this, I highly recommend that you check out some of our other female hormone videos. We also have videos on autoimmune diseases where we jump more into information about Th2 dominance or Th1 dominance. We also have uh, videos on thyroid dysfunction, ADD, ADHD, just about almost any health topic you can think of. We also have great blog articles at ibrainandbody.com where we go into a lot more detail about information like this. Thanks guys, and I hope you enjoy your day.